The Negro Justice League. Hi, welcome to the Negro Justice League, a Black Nerd Podcast, episode 82. I'm your host, Cherry. It's your boy, Jay. And we have uh, Chi Chi is back. I think this is the three Pete for Chi Chi. Hey. Three, three in a all row. Right. That's all y'all get for the rest of 2019. <laughs> so if y'all want to see her, you yeah. go ahead and join us on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> or she did her requirements for the year right, yeah. exactly I met my requirements she's trying to load it all on the front end so we can't ask her for nothing else <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you alright um, in the news we're going to go right up in it we recently had the Academy Awards ceremony and you know what we expected is what we got um, the first thing I want to say about that is Billy Porter I did not know who this was and I still kind of don't I don't really care but he show, he's black male showed up to the Academy Awards in a tuxedo from the top and ball gown from the bottom, velvet ensemble, and killed it. Um, it was it was gorgeous. Looking like black tuxedo max. It was it was one of the best outfits I've ever seen. Not just he won you know best dress for the evening, but it was one of the best dressed like ever outfits. I absolutely mm-hmm. love it. Um, but now we know who he is. Um, okay, into the awards. Regina King got an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in If Beale Street Could Talk, which congratulations. We've been waiting on her to get an award for a long time because she's been killing it forever since she was a kid, really. Um, Ruth E. Carter is a costume designer who won for Best Costume Design for Black Panther. Shout out to her. Um, Hannah Beachler won Best Production Design for Black Panther. And Mahershala Ali got his second Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in Green Book. Um, his first one being Best Supporting Actor in Moonlight. And um, the in- Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the whole team, they won Best Animated Feature Film, which is awesome. And Spike Lee got his long, 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 long overdue award for Best Adapted Spring- Screenplay for Black Klansmen. Um... And this one, this one, uh, Ludwig, let me go, I don't even know. I ain't, but, yeah, Ludwig, Ludwig Goranson, he got the best original score for Black Panther, but Black Panther did not get uh, best picture. Best picture went to Green Book, which, I mean. You saw the Chad Bosman yeah. memes. Yeah. You know what we think. Yeah. yeah. Which is messed up because they set us to believe that Black Panther. They sat them in the uh-huh. front. Uh, gave them a the, bunch all of awards, the, all the, all the advertisements. Instagram advertisements. I'm thinking I got those ads because I'm black, though. I don't think everybody got all those Black Panther Academy Awards <laughs> like we got. I really think they, they, because you know that they can targeted select. advertisements? Yeah, I think, I, mm-hmm. I, absolutely. You don't think they sent those ads to the Green Green Book crowd? No. Um, So that was trash. But we expected that because, you know, Green Book is a movie about a white savior and, um, you know, taking a, a Negro through the South and whatever. So, White savers always trump black power any day for these types of awards. So Black Panther was not going to win. Uh, moving on, Detec- Detective Pikachu just released a new trailer. I'm letting y'all know so that you can Google it up and check it out. Um, visually stunning. Uh, I-, I think it's still on par to be a good, uh, on-, on track to be a good movie. So we're going to keep an eye out for that. And Jay, you can go ahead and do your news. Yeah, so uh, another amazing, boring X-Men movie is coming out. Uh, Dark Phoenix official tra- uh, trailer for the Dark Phoenix, which is coming out, I believe, in June. Uh, it came out, and to give you spoiler, spoilerish ruins, if you saw X-Men The Last Man Standing, you're pretty much getting the same thing in this trailer, except no Wolverine. Uh, but go check out a, go check out our Facebook or go check on our Instagram. We have images of the poster. It's it's nice, but it's basically uh, Sansa Stark just looking like Jean Grey. It's we're gonna probably see it, but it wasn't a grabber. Um, also, good news though for Candyman, the movie remake, which is being done by Awesome Jordan Peele, who we immediately love. Um, they have found who they're gonna be having play their Candyman, and it's Yaya Abdul Mateen. Who, if you don't know who that is, he played the Black Manta in Aquaman. So he's really having a great year, it seems this year. Um, so let's support him. I know that maybe one of Cherry's new boos. We don't know. It ain't no, uh, 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 no, no, <laughs> no. I have told y'all on this show a long time ago um, that that was my boo when he played Cadillac on that show. 
What's that show? The Get Down. The Get Down. Yeah, Ben Bay. Get it right. Even oh, though I didn't, even, I didn't even see Aquaman yet. <laughs> 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 I have no interest in that. But yeah. Another interesting casting change is for Altered Carbon Two, which we also reviewed. Uh, the original Altered Carbon first season, where uh, Joel Kirkman was the main lead, but he is now being replaced by Andrew uh, Mack. Anthony. Who will be taking. Yeah, Anthony. Oh my God, oh, Andrew. Anthony Mackie is not as bad as Vincent Donna Donna Frio, uh, who will be taking over the role that Joel Kirkman was playing, which makes sense because if you know the story, the whole idea that they're able to switch over bodies and things of that nature, but keep their same mind works. Um, so it'll be kind of interesting to see Anthony Mackie's portrayal of the character, but maybe we'll see a trailer, at least a teaser, uh, a teaser soon to show the new casting changes and things of that nature. I'm happy um, about that because we needed some diversity. That was one of our criticisms was that black men don't exist in this world and we need some. Mm -hmm. And the only one black person really was basically uh, uh, a magic Negro type situation going on. Um, so yeah, we are interested in seeing more on that. And when we do, we'll let you know. Uh, thirdly, uh, check out on our website. We have a review of Riot Civil Unrest. It's a first impression. If you don't know, uh, about a week ago, we had our Indie Week, which was really awesome. We got to play a lot of interesting games. And one of them by our boy, uh, Mike is fired, Mr. Aha himself. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Jay, Jay, what was that? D-Ref. D-Ref. Ah, rough. <laughs> okay, this is making me uncomfortable. Can we move okay, on? Okay, okay. Right. Well, we we but, ain't gonna say no. We gonna see if Mike listens to the show. If he even brings yeah, it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, check out on NegroJusticeLeague.com. Of course, you'll be able to see a first impression review of Civil Unrest. Uh, he really did like it, and he gave some interesting uh, conversation topics on it. And we have a few clips, so you guys should probably like that. And always check our website more for more blogs and first impressions of the games once we get a chance to watch them on our Twitch and play them. Uh, sure. All right, y'all. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to take responsibility for this from the front end because I know that this is my fault. On this episode, we will be uh, uh, critiquing three Netflix originals. One, the Ted Bundy tapes. Two, Velvet Buzzsaw and three abducted in plain sight. What they all have in common is that they all have white male protagonists who are murderers or serial rapists. Um, and I, I did that on purpose. I thought that was a cool thing. And <laughs> the name for the theme is the White Man Power Hour. So uh, join us for the WMPH. <laughs> this is the name. <laughs> <laughs> they got quiet like they weren't in on this. Yeah. But, it don't sound so bad I, when it's an I'm just hearing this for the first time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just hearing this for the first time. So I if I knew, it. I wouldn't have signed up for this Girl. episode. I'm joking. So, no. so we, we spend so much time, like, we, we focus so heavily on black culture that, you know, sometimes every now and then we got to switch it up. And uh, <laughs> Is this going to be switch or up? switch up? Oh. <laughs> I was being serious. This is our uh, crossover. This is why Susan's our only fan. This right. Is, oh, Susan, Susan, don't leave us, please. Nah, she knows. Please don't leave us, Susan. Susan probably we, got we stories love to you. tell. She knows what it is. So oh, Susan. Susan's an ally. She's ready for this. She got popcorn. <laughs> yeah. So uh we're gonna talk about three of these white male protagonists and them doing what they do. Because we, we do talk about a lot on the show how I will disengage from a show if I can't in, uh, yeah. re relate to it. Relate to it. And mm -hmm. there is not Nan, black versus one black chick who's like British or something in Velvet Buzzsaw. And other than that, I think that's, that's it. That's questionable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Culturally, I don't know where. Mm. All right. But uh, Later. so let's do this. <laughs> First, <laughs> the Ted Bundy tapes. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I know one of Jay's biggest criticisms is that I will not watch something if I don't like it. And this is one of those things I watch. <laughs> it's about six episodes. And I, I think I watched Four. Four. Like, oh, so I watched like 75% of this. Okay. Yeah. I watched three of these episodes and I was just like, if I knew there was one more, I'd have watched it. I was just like, I can't do yeah, this. Yeah, the last one was like an hour. To be real, the fourth one is the longest one and you really yeah. don't need to watch it to no. get like, just no. I mean, the fourth one is basically, they killed him. The end. 
And That's in it. my defense, I was familiar with Ted Bundy before this. So mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't, and I think that was part of it. I think this, this, this documentary was for people who really had no idea that this happened. Yeah. And, um, for me having no, I have a, I like serial killers. I like to, you know, know about, learn about them, having known what was going to happen and who, he, what he did, there was just nothing for me to learn. And so, um, for me, there was no entertainment value. It was strictly educational. And if you're not there for the education, there was no entertainment to be had for me. And not because it's a documentary, but because it was a super dry documentary. Yeah, it was definitely a dry documentary. It was interesting to me because I generally try not to give too much of my brain space to powerful white men who are able to kill um, almost with impunity. So I knew about Ted Bundy, just like you kind of would know, but I really didn't give too much. I knew the broad strokes. This allowed me to learn the more detailed strokes of his whole story. But if I already knew that, then this is yeah, I could completely see why you would tune out because it is as dry as a doc. This is exactly why people don't want to watch documentaries, yes, this type yes. of thing. Yes. Um, I know, Chi Chi, you had a, a, not a criticism, but you had a thought earlier before the show about this couldn't happen in 2019. Or if it did, it would be play out differently because technology would impact yeah. a lot of what was going on. So, oh my goodness. The lack of technology or, or the state of technology back then, it was so hard. It was so hard. Like, hey, DNA, he blessed it, he raped these women. Okay, get a get a sperm sample, match it up. You know, he's okay now he's been uh processed and he's in the system. Match it up. Gets but they clearly on several occasions would you know, say, hey, you know, technology back in the 70s, they didn't have anything. They had nothing. And that's what actually made it very difficult for them to capture Ted on many occasions. Yeah, and they were so, going they were yeah. going through records, D- DMV records by hand, trying to find by everybody hand. named Ted or Theodore or Teddy mm-hmm. or anything like that. Because they didn't have yeah. Google. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have computers. Nothing. You can't just type it in. And so, like they it's said, that, yeah, they had hundreds of people on the list and they had to narrow it down. It was... Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It was crazy. Now you, there's so many searchable databases that you can find one intern in 15 minutes can, can find out all the stuff you want to know. Goes what also me. was interesting about that to me was how they just had no uh, connectivity with the police, uh, the different state police departments or anything like that. So basically, you know, him just moving to another state was like really giving him a clean record. Well, I mean, they just did not share that information even back then, even with the technology. That's still the that case. Like, like <laughs> that ain't, yeah. that ain't that new. Well, not I mean, really, that's not like that, like that actually, like it's the, the birth of serial codes and things like that. And like going crossing state lines is what brought, you know, states to start working together, you know, databases and stuff like, like the, they're still reluctant in some cases, but right. it is not, something that is unheard of nowadays. Yeah. I'm like, la- I'm like, wait, okay, you guys, somebody talked to, you know, Seattle. This man is doing it again. Nothing, nothing. I mean, uh, state agencies still are not, are difficult to get to talk to each other. Any agencies are honestly, there's not a lot of communication between government agencies, even if they're in the same, same state and one deals with health and one deals with law mm-hmm. or whatever. It's, you would be shocked. So that part didn't surprise me. What I was also kind of surprised at, um, and maybe I didn't glance over it in the movie, but it felt like the FBI really did not get involved until very much later into the game, it almost seemed. When like somebody got abducted and became a whole missing person thing for a minute. Mm-hmm. I think this was around the Tallahassee time. Which I did not know he he did stuff in Tallahassee, actually. So that was actually a big surprise to me that, like, FSU was his kind of last hurrah before he went to Lake City. Yeah. So that was interesting to find out. But um, So you see he stayed on that side of the tracks. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. He didn't want no smoke. So Ted Ted couldn't walk around the set like that? No. 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 Campus police would have pulled him out. And you didn't have any... Sorority fraternity houses. I mean, I don't think the campus had theirs back then, but still, wasn't gonna happen. I just think it is honestly, it the whole documentary just made me feel like 
it is such a privilege. Like at any point in history, white men really had it made, man. They really had it made. Like, I don't know how you could just be able to go from state to state and just randomly walk up to people and convince people just because you said you're a police officer to get in the cars with you and follow you around and and it's okay. But you're forgetting the climate and the culture at, of people back then in that time frame, in that time period. Like it was pretty much Canada, but in the U.S. Like. Yeah. Like, they were still hitchhiking and stuff. People did, did hitchhiking. People that locked their doors. They they lift their keys in ignition. You know, You're walking so, down the street by yourself at night, like, oh, I'm right, just gonna go home. Not, well, exactly. I'm just gonna go home. You know, and things like that. So it is very plausible that that's how. True. Very I'm true. pretty sure that Ted Bundy was not like there were there were probably other serial killers prior to him. He's just the, his narcissism and all that is what got him mm-hmm. caught up. Because he thought he was going to be a lawyer up until the end. Right. (laughs) Up until the end. Up until the very end. Like, you know, so you you, you think people were killing people way before him. Yeah. But that's not that's not improbable either for a white male who's committed criminal acts against several women, whoever, to then go into politics, one, or Mm -hmm. law or whatever. Like, that's not unheard of. It still happens now. Exactly. But you think of think about it. it. It's it makes so much sense because they have the knowledge, the intelligence to not get caught or he can get caught and nobody cares. You know, we make his record public record and there's excuses and he keeps his job. That's that's the world we live in. Oh, that's the country we live in, at least. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I just as boring as it was. I just do not feel that I have too much more to say about this. Um, if you're interested in this period of time where serial killers um, were, were first starting to become active and, and you want to know how the FBI learned to train operatives to hunt them, Mindhunter on Netflix is a really good show. Um, it's based on a true story. It's based on the process the FBI went through in interviewing convicted killers to learn psychologically what to look for and how to identify them. Uh, I think, and Ted Bundy, I think, is, is actually included in there. But it's, um, like I said, it's based on a true story. It's it's a show. It's not a documentary. So check that. It's a drama. Check it out. I watched most of it. I thought it was really good. It, it starts to get drawn out towards the end. All right. So we're going to give this some grades. Uh, a through F. I'm going to give it a C. Because factually, it was fine. It's just documentaries do not have to be boring. And this was extremely boring. Um, so Jay, Jay, what do you give it? Um, yeah, I agree. I'm gonna give it a C. Um, I learned things, which is always good. If that Zac Efron movie ever comes out soon enough, I could probably see myself watching it just to kind of see how that goes. Um, but I'm, I'm okay not having to, like, I don't want a season two of this at all, period. Uh, thank God, you know, spoilers, they killed him in the end. So it's a C for me. Okay. Uh, Chi-Chi? Yeah, he was like, the prosecutor's like, I was elated. I'm ashamed to say, but I was elated. Oh, anyways, I gave it a C plus. It was very well put together. Like, as a documentary, I didn't lose interest. If I did not know about Ted Bundy, um, that it would probably gotten better grade, but because I knew about it, the only reason why I finished it is because I needed to have that closure. I know he's gone, but I needed to to have that closure. And even then, it wasn't that satisfying in the end. But see, okay, I'm gonna move it on. Velvet Buzzsaw. I'm gonna Yay! be honest with y'all. I thought this was gonna be good from the previews. Um, I thought I don't. We're going to obviously, you know, you listen to the show, know we do spoilers. Watching the previews, I thought it was going to be like like a, a guy, like a Bob Ross type guy painting pictures. And somebody figures out that the location he plays the pictures in is where he killed bodies or something like that. I don't know where I got that from, but I thought it was going to be Bob Ross. <laughs> right. How could you, how could you think such a thing? I thought it was like, like a celebrated yeah, painter. Did no. you not send us a Bob Ross Funko? Not the point. How, how, could, um, how could you? I told you I think it. that Chesterfield's a serial killer. I think I've, I've made that known. Anyway. He said, no, uh, serial killer. 
too. Huh? Oh yeah, you, no you, territory too. you you live in a house full of murderers. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm gonna get what? you out. I thought it was gonna be like a guy who paints landscapes and they're you know amazing, and then everybody realized, oh, that's where the bodies are. Some I don't know. I was completely way off. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. this is about like the art scene. Um. The sellers and the buyers, well, not really buyers, the sellers and the, and the critics, um, and they come up on some, well, somebody comes up on some pictures because somebody died, some girl, somebody in her building died, she went up in his house and stole his paintings and started selling them, and he basically, for no reason that it was ever explained, comes through the paintings and hems everybody up, um, which is a cool concept. It gave me Tales from the Crypt vibes, like strong mm -hmm. Tales from the Crypt vibes. But like Tales from the Crypt, it should have been maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> not not two hours or however. It's like six hours Wait, long. you're not even going to give it a full half hour? Just no. 20 minutes? No. <laughs> no. She's like, I want commercials. No. Mm -hmm. The only thing that kept me engaged was the murders because they were creative. Other than that, Achichi, how? How? Did you enjoy this? I, it. I enjoyed it. And once I saw the preview, I was like, I'm going to like this. Then you two were like, oh, no, it sucks. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm still going to like this. And I liked it. It was made for me. What did you like? All of it. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm a very scary How? person. So it, All just of it, had, it had uh, enough horror to keep me engaged. Like it was, I felt like actually it was very rushed. They could have fleshed some stuff out. I liked like it. the movie. And, like the, it took 30 minutes for them to start killing people. Yeah, but still, like the buildup, like I wanted to know more about, you know, everybody's role, like on a regular basis before they got in touch with uh, these, what? before they got a hold of Deesa's paintings. Yeah, I liked it. I hate I liked it. it. Everybody here, Jay. Do you agree that everybody in this movie was awful? Well, well they all died, so I guess you guys was trash. Yeah, <laughs> there was no redeeming characters. Um, I don't even. There really wasn't even a villain because how the painting started killing people really wasn't explained in a good way. It, it was just from top to bottom. I feel like the only reason this got a lot of buzz, pun intended, was because it had a fairly big cast in Jake Gyllenhaal playing this art critic named Morph. Um, you know, Rene Russo playing one of the art sellers. So it had a cast that made it feel like, I'm just disappointed. This could have been such an amazing, surreal type movie. And it just let me down on all fronts. Like, no one wants to talk about <laughs> the art scene like that. This is from someone who loves the art scene. I was going to say, I, I thought you would like this. that. <laughs> I thought this was going to hit all of my marks. It was horror. It was supposed to be about surrealism, art scene. I really thought I was going to be all up in this. Um, <laughs> That's what he said. But... <laughs> wow, no. Oh, I'm sorry. It was, appropriately, it was appropriately bland for me. I liked it. And a lot of these big name actors, I, I don't even know. I don't know. I didn't know half she of them. like I, baked I, chicken with just lemon and salt. Not even. Like the lady with that, that was on the Oprah show. Just the yeah. just chicken. Like it, it was, you know, this, I, I'm <laughs> Oprah right now. Like, okay, this is, okay, this is good. Uh, can y'all add a little bit more? Mm? And me no? and Jay are oh, black okay. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. We're offended. Get it out of my face. No, Listen, I liked it. All the memes are bad. All the gifts are bad. It's just no. I will say that I did no, watch this no. whole movie and only because the killings were they weren't even good. They were stupid. Like one girl died because she got covered in paint. What? She got covered in paint got and then she ended paint. up on a wall. She got absorbed into the mural. So it's not that that whole that whole her getting covered in paint. You know, you gotta you gotta think about it. You I know, you gotta. It. I saw her on the wall. This was stupid. Think, but, yeah, and that so happens. That happens in Tales in the Hood. That's where you got that from. Gotta, Tales from the Hood. The original. Well, I mean, the only black interesting. Gotta... And yeah, yeah. The one black person gets the same death as dude from Tales from the Hood. I see y'all. I see you. Mm -hmm. And. That was Zawe Ashton. I don't know. I, I feel like I've seen her before in something. She just didn't seem that great acting wise. Yeah, no, she wasn't. She it was seemed very, very, very dry, wooden. Um, 
it, it didn't make sense. And first they had it start off like she was supposed to be maybe someone we should have rooted okay. for, mm-hmm. wanted to see succeed. And then all of a sudden she's just this extremely narcissistic, I will do whatever it takes to be seen, supported um, character. It was almost like a face heel type switch. It was really, really weird. And she did nothing for me with as much screen time she got. The only interesting character to me was the one played by John Malkovich. And he was like a B-side story that wasn't even needed. I still don't understand that. I thought he was going to end up be the killer or mm-hmm. like the, I don't know what he, I, I don't know. I guess he was just there to put a name, his name on the cast because, and draw some sticks in the sand. I mean, some sand, sand with a stick. <laughs> some, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Some circles. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I, I turned that. I didn't even watch all that. I cut it off. I went on Twitter to see what people were talking about, and people were talking about that last scene with the damn beach and sticks, mm-hmm. like it was the most awe-inspiring wow, ending of the movie. And I was just like, "Fam, he was he was at the beach drawing and sticks. I'm pretty sure he has brain cancer or something like." No, I, I thought maybe dang something might be wrong with it because he was drawing a lot of, but I think also like her telling him to go off to the beach and just only take care of yourself like only think about yourself it mm. just that's what saved his life what you i know don't what like I think? is no. they had the, mm-hmm. they they set us up to think that the painting the guy was killing through his paintings and that's mm-hmm. pretty true but there's some things that didn't happen through the paintings like like the guy the first guy who died um he had the paintings in the back of his truck truck caught fire got out of the truck truck and then like a monkey grabbed him through a painting mm-hmm. or but i didn't think that was one of the guy's paintings so i don't know how that works and then the girl who got absorbed into the paint, that makes sense. Um, but they're not the same guy's paintings either, so maybe it doesn't make sense. And then the lady, the one that really bothers me is she has a tattoo on the back of her neck that says yeah. Velvet Buzzsaw, Velvet Buzzsaw. Velvet. and it basically slices her head off. And I don't understand how these you profited was, it off. Of I, I know painting. that's I know why they died. Everybody who profited okay. off the painting or tried to sell the painting died. But my okay. thing is if he's doing it through the paintings, be consistent. With the paintings right. being the mechanism. Because that tattoo, I guarantee you, he didn't do it. So it shouldn't yeah. be... The deaths, to me, should be related to the actual paintings. Or, like, possession of the paintings. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like if we ever were to get, like, commentary or backstory on this, we'd find out either, A, this was one of those studio movies where everyone was on a contract to do something. <laughs> and they kind of just put them all on this movie. Wow. And they knew it wouldn't make it in the theaters. So that are like, yo, Netflix will buy it. And Netflix would give it that nice little, you know, buzz about, oh, this is going to be interesting and get some views on it. Or that there's a whole bunch of the movie that was cut out that would have made this make much more sense. Because there really is parts of the movies that are just talked about and characters introduced that either just disappear mid-movie or we're supposed to feel some certain way about them and we don't. Um, And there was only like three deaths in this whole five-hour long trilogy i don't facts. understand big facts big facts there's a lot of dialoguing that goes on there's a lot of unnecessary dialogue for me that just i couldn't stand and sit there and listen to these conversations between these people i hate so it was it was hard for me i i did want to say there there is three black characters in the whole movie one is josephina played by zawe ashton the other one is supposed to be this new art Nuevo type black dude with uh, oh, braided yeah. hair yeah. who has this whole thing called Sphere who's kind of involved but not really. And then there's the random ex-bisexual boyfriend or Ed. non-bisexual boyfriend, Ed, of mm-hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal's character. And yeah. I find it really interesting that all of them are basically involved with like being sexual props yeah. to, oh, you know what? Yeah. to more stuff story in some shape fashion yeah, or form like other than true. that they really don't exist too much or need Dang, to exist. man i didn't think about that <sighs> message all right grade i'm coming in with a flying f because <laughs> this was a, like a complete waste of my time and then you added that propism of the black folk they might have got a d but mm, big f sorry yeah. i didn't even wait um, for y'all <laughs> I yeah. f I, I, I'm pretty sure I sent a message to Cherry as soon as I finished watching this. Like, this you took did. me way too long to get through. I was like, it can't um, be that bad. <laughs> it's an F. There was nothing about Big this that F. was redeeming to me at all. 
Big old F. I don't even know if I'm gonna let Chi Chi give a grade. She, she, she's she's tripping for me, guys. No. Because B you have horrible taste in a no, B. It's because, hey, listen, I can watch a lot of things and and you know what was that mo- movie you had us watch last episode with Nadia? Anyways, I like that too. But Nadia? this is my top movie. I don't even know what she's talking was. about Russian doll. Russian doll. Which oh, great. which was good. It was oh, okay, artsy farty and weird, that. but we liked it. Okay, yeah, I thought like you feel like it. But anyways, I like this. You were on the episode with what us. What you mean? I didn't know, but I forgot. And you listened to the okay. episode. <laughs> I did this. I listened to the entire episode, but I She's forgot. She's listened to herself. Sense. No. No. All right, moving on. She, she would be the person to go to the episode and just listen to her part. <laughs> no, I don't listen to my part. <laughs> she fast forces through everything else. Wow. Okay, all right, all right. We got to move on because we need some time for this. My favorite... Mm. The only one I actually liked of the evening is Abducted in Plain Sight. I went into this because of the uproar on social media. And I was like, it was, it was you know, everybody was watching Fire. And so documentaries are popping right now. And then the next big thing was Abducted in Plain Sight. And at first I couldn't see the correlation. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it was about. I just knew that something to like somebody got kidnapped twice and that's odd or, you know, she was stolen from her parents and there were some issues. Like I didn't know until I started watching this and five minutes in, I started texting folks like y'all got to watch this. <laughs> and then 20 yeah. minutes in, I was like, you call me when you do. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I love this. This is my favorite thing. Um, I don't know where to start. This, this story is great because it's so preposterous. I mean, it's, as soon as it starts, it's like, what? They did what? And who? They let who do what? In the and, first with 10 who? minutes. And I, I really appreciate that I am black. Sound because like Cardi B. I think, mm-hmm. I think oh, you really got to be black to fully appreciate how insane this is. I think if you're not, you might think some of the stuff that goes down is okay or not that wild. But coming from how, the way I was raised... Every second of this is insanity, mm-hmm. and I loved it. I love. I watched the whole thing. I there is, it up. Yeah, there is not one moment in the whole movie where it could have been a black person and continued from this point on. Yeah, not one. No, there's there's so many points where this could have stopped. So, there's, Sam, let me tell you, if I ever had a friend pull me over on the side of a road, no, <laughs> wait a minute, got there yet? Let's start from the beginning. (laughs) So these families, as families do, become friends um, because parents have things in common and they have children of similar ages. So they don't start to spend their weekends and evenings and stuff together. That I used to do as a child. We had families who my parents were friends with the parents and I was friends with the kids and we would spend every other weekend switching at their house and our house and back and forth. That's normal, right? Mm -hmm. Um, That's where it ends. (laughs) (laughs) That's so, not long for me. My parents go where? Your I mean, we would go say, as yeah, a family. Would, yeah, go in. We would go as a like our my whole family would go to the other family's house one weekend and the next weekend they would come to our house and like you know we grew up together like that. So I have friends who you know I grew up having you know barbecues and stuff with on the weekends, and that's it. So where it goes from there is the parents start to notice that the father, um, B Robert Birchtold from the other family has taken a particular interest in their uh, like 11 at the time year old daughter, mm-hmm. Jan um, Broberg, the Birch Toads and the Brobergs. It's, that is a painful, the whole movie. Um, they notice that the husband from the other family is really interested in the daughter. Like he wants to be friends with her. He comes to the house to see just her. He calls her 11 year old self. And this is a grown man from his house to talk to her and he at and and they allow this told, to go on. Told told his mo- told told her mother that I'll pick her up from school. Yes, her told her school. mama he was going to pick her up. Then he picked her up from the house and said he's taking her out to the woods or something. <laughs> Horseback <laughs> riding. Where man? Horseback I paused that part because the mama <laughs> at that point the mom already knew something was awry. So she was she made up. Oh well, she has piano lessons. So now yeah. Jan's in. Jan's like, oh please, mom. My mom would have been like, she has piano lessons, so she can't go nowhere. And I'd be like, yes, ma'am, piano lessons it is. 
I can't and fathom. My mom wouldn't even lie. My mom would be like, absolutely. Now, ain't no way you coming to get I'm the just, I'm just saying, if it was in that same yeah. situation. Yeah. Same yeah. situation, that way. Yeah. yeah. I remember my friends whose houses I went to, their dad was who I know the least. He would say hi when I got there, would say bye when I left. Mm-hmm. That's it. Not no... I'm picking you up Sleeping from school. The same bed. They was they fell asleep. Uh, All of them slept together on the trampoline, and he was messing with her on the trampoline. And the parents like, "How you let this grown man sleep with your daughter? I couldn't sleep in nobody's house if they had a daddy. Like if it was just a single mom, I could I could probably finesse. If they had a dad, it ain't happening. <laughs> like, <sighs> it's crazy. And it get, I mean it gets worse. And then when he stuff takes, like this, when he takes her horseback riding, he doesn't bring her back. And the mom doesn't call the police because she don't want to start no trouble. How like, does the movie not end there <laughs> when you don't it. bring back your child for a whole mm-hmm. two days? And you're Bruh. just like, well, maybe there's an un- there's something we're not understanding. How are you not understanding your child's missing? Not coming. Right. Not only that, they 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 didn't call Gail, the wife, then and there. Oh, well, we'll, we'll see. Let's, let's wait a few days. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I would have broke down your house. I would have been down. Yo. Y'all have kids. I don't. How how could this can you could you kinda explain it how this might have, it be? It could not have happened. It could not have happened. Um it could not have it could not have happened. There have been situations where my friends have picked my child up from school. Every single one of those situations I initiated, they're all female friends. I've been like, hey, can you get my kid from school? They've done it. Called me, said, Hey, I got your kid from school. Then send me a picture, hey, he's eating nuggets. And then <laughs> when I showed There's up, a timeline. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. yes, yes, yes. There's and, receipts. And then when it's time for him to come home, he comes home. That is it. And these are people that I know very well. Not somebody that lives across the street from me. I don't trust people that live across the street from me. It's somebody that I know like front and back. But um, mm. no, there's no situation where I ask my child and you tell me no, and I or I can't mm-hmm. reach you. Or there's no there's no situation where I'm not on in the car talking to the police. I'm gonna hunt you down myself, and the police will get there exactly. to see what's left. We'll <laughs> like I, I, I don't. And and then by that time, I cuff me, cuff me. All right, we going. And I would think something like that would be crazy, even in today's time when there's cell phones and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. This is when if 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 you didn't know where they were specifically, there was no way of contacting. There's nope. no tracking. There's nothing. Nope. It's literally gone. And she has other kids. So why would this man okay. just be like, hey, I'm picking your one kid up? Mm-hmm. Then what gets worse and what Jay was hinting at, he finesse after he comes back, he finesses the whole family. Whole family. By starting a rela- a sexual relationship with the mother. And then that that you know divide divide and conquer the family. So if the parents aren't a unified force, they're easier to um, get the child. So he starts messing with the mom. Then Jay he starts messing with the dad. <laughs> no, he messes. With, yeah, he messed with the mom first. Yeah, yeah, he messes with the mom first. Then he takes the dad on a ride. And is like, hey, can you lend me a hand? Wink, wink. <laughs> and um, the dad not only and everybody's so blown about that instance that I don't know that a lot of people caught that the dad said this went on repeatedly. Like this wasn't. Yeah. A one time thing. A, it was a relationship. This wasn't a pop off. It wasn't a one off. It was, it was a full on relationship. And, you know, obviously, I'm feeling like, all right, dad was clearly homosexual mm-hmm. and dealing with some feelings. And but the story of it is so absurd. And this is an old man we're watching tell us this story while he's in his nice, comfortable chair at home, <laughs> just looking so embarrassed. Like, gosh, it's golly. Sad. I feel sorry yeah. for because they're super, yeah. super naive. That that's the problem. They're so excruciatingly naive that you kind of feel sad for them, but at the same time, you're like, "This is insane." Yeah, okay, what point? That's you- what makes it so absurd because it really is. It's like at one every time they give you something to be like, "This could not happen." They up the ante and up they did the it ante. for years. Yeah. So and he can't. Mother- Go ahead. When the mother's talking about uh, B, even. Years later, every time she talks about him, especially when they ha- have their relationship moments, she clearly had some level yep. of feeling still because she just seems like she's going through yeah, a beautiful walk through memory lane. Yeah, There is not mm-hmm. enough charisma in the world mm-hmm. for my whole family, my parents, and me as a middle schooler to get finessed by one man. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't... <laughs> how much sauce do you have that I you can run through a family? 
<laughs> I ain't never heard of this. There was a part in it where one of the sisters said, I shared my room with Jan the entire time. And B came in and started mm-hmm. making it to where he came into your house and said, yo, fam, I need your daughter to be able to have space. So I'm going to just uh, build, build a, a wall. wall in the middle of her bed. And, and then I'm going to sleep in bed with her for six months. Because I have emotional problems and I need to sleep specifically with your daughter. Not Never no, mind you that I have a wife and kids of my own. No, mind you, this is after I've kidnapped her twice that you guys have had to fly and go get her, married her in Mexico and everything. Yeah, yo, is, the phone call's like, naive. yo, we're in Mexico. We, we talk married. But- Chi Chi talks about uh, cultural differences in the time periods where people were more trusting back then, but this is above and beyond. I don't think that this flies in any time. The stealing another child multiple times and sleeping in the bed like this, this is, you can't explain this away by it being the 70s. I, no. No, I'm not saying that you did. I'm of, saying anybody. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not talking about me. I'm, uh, this, this is the case of selfish parents. Like they were more concerned about getting caught and their dirty laundry would be being thrown out there over the safety of their child. I hear that. Like, no, no, they didn't want to get caught or they didn't want their laundry. Cause at that time, I don't think they knew about each other doing stuff with B mm-hmm. and that's essentially what it was. Hey, let's kind of do this under the table and try and get our daughter back and kind of work with this guy because we are ashamed of our transgressions. And here's my thing. Now that you said that, they do break up because the wife is just head mm-hmm. over heels for B. But do they explain, or is there a point where we hear that sh- she found out about him and B? Yes, because when they were when he was gonna indict um, B, B's wife came to the house and was like, "Hey, if you don't sign this mm-hmm. paperwork, we're gonna release that you had a homosexual." Um, behaviors would be and then so he told the wife and the wife was like oh no we can't let that happen okay and you're right i know that they signed the paperwork and i forgot that the wife was involved in that mm-hmm. and we talking about naivety and the time frame i just want to show a small correlation that both this family um the broberg's family as well as the people who kind of let ted bundy get away with a lot were both mm-hmm. members of the latter-day saint church yep so I mean, both of them have stories of gay, just being completely open and just completely trustworthy because they're mem- cause they kept on saying that in the film, well, he's a part of the church and mm-hmm. he, you know, everybody knows him and everyone says he's a good guy. Mm-hmm. He's already kidnapped your daughter twice. How is twice. he a good guy? And you still letting him up in your house in her bed. Oh, that oh, just, just disgusts me. Accident, like, oh no, I was cooking and the butcher knife just so happened to get impaled in his throat. Oh, I know for a fact. I don't Give- know how that I don't know how that happened, but it's, it's so unfortunate. Given the stories I know about women further back, so a couple generations back, um, I know for a fact he would have ended up dead. Like you just it wouldn't mm-hmm. it wouldn't fly. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't fly. Rat poison. That would have been and- it. And the girl who's about this, because we get to talk to her, um, or we get to hear her talk about it, Jane, I really feel bad for her. Um, mm-hmm. I, You know, people have issues about this whole being made books and movies and whatever, but she said when she did the count of like how many times they basically had straight on sex, it was over 200 times easily. And... Just imagining an eleven-year-old girl being yeah. told that yeah. you know if she does this, her family is going to somehow die. And yeah, he told the, her he's going to kill the whole family, or they were going to die. You know, the aliens were going to kill the whole family, or he, he, they would take the sister, or the dad would go blind. And here's my thing: <sighs> I understand a child believing something like, "If you don't listen to me, I'm going to kill everybody you love." That makes sense for a child to believe that because that's plausible. I struggle with somebody middle yeah. school age. Believing that aliens have sent you a specific mission to get pregnant and this is what you got to do. Like the alien part for me, I mean, given who her parents are, okay. But um, I know, knowing myself, knowing I have a child that's almost middle school age, I sh- like what? How mm-hmm. do you, as a parent, well, I, I don't know me as a parent. The as a parent, they gave her. It was no, crazy. it's it's not that. It's the you don't. You have to ground your children in reality. Like the Momo challenge. I showed it to my son. I said, look, this is a doll. This is on YouTube. It's not real. Are you afraid of it? It looks scary. All right, cool that it looks scary. It's supposed to look scary, but you know that it's just a doll. It's not coming to this house. It's not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Like, 
hello is just like any other you have to ground your children and obviously they 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 did nothing i don't know what they did as parents but you know what it, in the, in the same instance i'm assuming i i'm not familiar with the latter day saint faith but i'm assuming they believe in god oh. you know and things like that so if she was so grounded in in, in the belief that god exists christ exists they, she shouldn't have been able to be fooled by no aliens. No, 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 like no, no, that. no, no, no. I don't think this, you're right because I think, and somebody going to tag me on this probably, I think they do have some type of alien type situation in their religion. Oh, well then, then if that's I think, the case, and like, it since you sense. said that, I, I think there's, I don't, I don't know, I, I can't look this up while I'm well, my talking thing right is somebody, if, if, if I grew, you know, I grew up in the Catholic church, if somebody came and said aliens, I'd be like, who? That ain't in the Bible. I didn't. Well, I, they didn't tell me none of that at, at Sunday school. So you can't, you can't do that to me. It wasn't just the aliens, chair. Both of you are right, but uh, it wasn't just about being aliens. But it was about she was supposed to be the mother of the next upcoming uh, major Savior. being. Mm -hmm. and but that's not that be... far off. It's far off to us because we yeah. are whatever type of Christians or whatever we are, but for their religion is not. And I, now yeah. it makes sense. It makes sense now because okay. she's already had the seeds planted for that type of brainwashing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's like, that's a like classic Stockholm syndrome. Right mm -hmm. there. It's Completely. Just, cause, Cause I was, cause he was doing this from the beginning. Like, you know, like there, there are men in my life, the older men that, that have been around like outside of uncles. Well, yeah, I can even say uncles that have been around that I've, grown to love as fathers because they're they're impacting my life but never never in that way so but see how she had that foundation that just went left when it should have went right and that's how it just went down this road and why i can't really give the parents even though we see them as older adults just feeling so embarrassed and ashamed Part of the reason that was even able to continue is because both of them were trying to keep a secret relationship secret with him relationship. under wraps. So they still mm -hmm. had him come to the house. They still mm -hmm. had nice, amicable relationships with him because they were still, even years later, after the kidnappings, after the police involvement, after the FBI said, you need to tell us the truth, they were still trying to mess with them. They were still having secret meetings with him. They were still telling him, I love you. The phone call with the mother when yep. they hadn't heard about the daughter in six months when they moved to L.A., she was just like, oh, well, how are you doing? And are she you still doing thought she was okay? going to run off and marry him. The mom yeah. did after he got married the daughter. Ooh, her there's parents. One picture, Go there's one picture in the thick of the mom being with B where he's holding the daughter like how that pastor was holding Ariana Grande and the mom is sitting there with her hand on B's knee. Like, ma'am. So it's one of those things like, it's okay with what you do. Oh, my goodness. It, that's so horrible because it happens in real life. It's, but mostly you see that in like those movies or with, with drug addict moms. Well, okay, I'll let you sleep with my daughter for a fix. You know what I'm saying? This, this was that case. I, I will turn mm -hmm. a quote unquote blind eye to what you are doing with my child as long as we can keep on doing what we're doing yeah and they don't even don't now that, that it's over as as jay was was saying the anger isn't there like mm -hmm. when you go back I, you know i can go back right. and tell you some stories about some people that did some things and it could have been 10 years ago and i'm still hot Angry. they talk about this like yeah it happened you know oh we're sorry we could have done better and it's like they it's like it still hasn't mm -hmm. fully sunk in that how horrible horribly they failed their child Repeatedly, when the for father years. cries, it's never he cries about the shame. I think of his mm -hmm. story being told. Mm -hmm. But when he first start really crying, it's either a about the fact that he cheated on his wife or he felt so bad, mm -hmm. or the fact that you know he had this homosexual relationship with B and he just should have been smarter about it. Like when they talk about what actually happened to Jane, I see none of the anger. If, none of the anger. If 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 just ten percent of this happened to me, my mother. Mm -hmm. Whew. Whew. like right. i'm thinking now that i have my own child like i don't understand how a parent i i don't understand how a parent cannot love their child like now it, it gives me a new appreciation of how much my parents love me and the things that they've done for me like no let, let me hear no no let a, let a no grown way. man I'm look at you too long whole, right right 
especially in the community, in the black community, oh, even with fathers, uncles, well, you know, at certain age, you can't be sitting on your uncle's lap no more. Yeah. You, know, you can't be hugging your uncle like that. You know, things like that. Even if it's an innocuous situation, well, you can't sit, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, whoo, whoo, it couldn't, I it completely, could've been. I completely understand my mother telling me as a young child, no, you can't go to people's houses mm -hmm. and everything. And me feeling like, oh, she's so, she's so stern. Yep. Everyone else gets to go to friends' houses and hang out and all mm -hmm. of this. And it wasn't like I was a dumb kid anyway. I had smart sense. I plenty of times said no to doing things just because, A, I either didn't want to get in trouble or, B, mm -hmm. it just didn't seem right. So, I, But as an adult, seeing that, I was like, I get it now. Because yeah. there are sicko people in the world so who cool. some parents, even as adults, will absolutely allow them to be a part of their family, mm -hmm. um, even if they know there's something wrong with them. And my mother was just like, we're not even taking a chance. So just no. I'm curious yeah. now um, what Jan's relationship is with her parents. Because for me, it would take some counseling and several years for me to forgive them for not parenting me, not protecting me at all. Like I would have to go to therapy to get through this. You know, what? I, I, think I think she said in the movie that she kind of did go through that part mm -hmm. of like starting to talk about it and doing the yeah. uh, lectures was finding a way to forgive her parents. It, it really sounded like forgiving her mother. Um for allowing this to happen for as long as it did. But she said she forgave them so they could forgive themselves. No, no, no not at all. I don't know if I, I, it'd be hard. I don't know if I, I don't know. I don't know if I got it in me. No, you're going to live with the shame of knowing what, but then again, I, I think also it wasn't until her 16th birthday did the light switch split. So until then she cared for this man. So she was, you, her sense of anger was, towards her family but in a different sense like how dare you keep this man with me and you know you don't know how long it takes to re-engineer your mind mm. and, and and get and her her mind will, will restructure what it wants to restructure so she yes she's angry at him she might be angry at her parents but she had the ability in my opinion to restructure the narrative in her mind as the years progress. So it's very possible that she might not have been full, uh, full on. She might have blamed her parents, but not like it would have been like whatever, you know, but she forgave her parents so they could forgive themselves. It's ridiculous. I think at 16, you might not realize how mad you should be at your parents. But I think mm -hmm. as an adult, especially if you have your own kids, that you t look back and realize, oh, no, everything about this was wrong. I, you know, I feel for her. Um, that being said, we do need to move on. Um, I want, do want to say that there's going to be a season two of this because apparently it ain't over. <laughs> so, so, I don't know. B has gone. B's dead. I don't know. Like, they just said it's going to be a season two. I'm, and they said it was going to be the same family. Maybe, maybe that might have been incorrect. I would like to see a season two with a different story. This has to be like fake all the way. This can't be real. It can't, it can't be no more. <laughs> this can't be real. This can't I, be real. This can't be the real family. Like I, this can't be real. This has to all be made up. I want to see this again, but I want to see it with a new story. Cause I'm sure there you, you, there's plenty. Um, mm -hmm. all right, y'all. So we're going to do grades. Jay, what did you give this? I'm going to give it a solid a, um, it was, it was, as a movie, it was entertaining, but it was entertaining in the fact of the absurdity of what was happening. Because mm -hmm. every every 10 minutes, there was a new mm -hmm. drop bombshell. And I was just like, it kept you glued to watching it. This was one of those things. I didn't look at my phone too much mm -hmm. because I didn't want to possibly miss 30 seconds mm -hmm. of the father saying mm -hmm. his friend asked him to help him relieve some stress. And, you know, well, gosh, golly, I wanted to be a golly. good friend. So I did it. <laughs> so I did it. What? But what happened <laughs> after the fact? Like, it, did anybody go with washcloth? Like, what, 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 what like, how did that? <sighs> Listen, I know enough friend. to know enough. Just trying to be a good that, friend. That, that being a good friend story, it was probably a lot more involved. Because the, the, the mother would say stuff like, you know, we just kind of petted each other, but nothing happened after that. Nikki. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right, Kathy. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But I'll give it an A. It was it was entertaining. I don't know how they could do a season two with the same family. <laughs> <laughs> but if it was the same family, I would definitely want to see. Um, Did she? 
I give it an A too. Everything Jay said, but I I don't want to see season, season two is going to be from the FBI's perspective about how they told this family not to mess with this guy and they did it anyway. It, and they just kept doing it. Right. One officer was like, they wasted my, my life. They wasted my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I felt that in my soul. Like, they wait, this family wasted my life. But yeah, <laughs> That's a. not funny. It is. Um, a, I was thoroughly entertained. I'm entertained talking about it. <laughs> if you have not seen it, please, even though you heard what we had to say, it's still just as good. Please go back and watch it. Um, then I really glad we watched it when we did because I would hate to have seen that with spoilers. I really wanted that story to be completely fresh and I wanted to be shocked. And you, you're shocked every few minutes they're dropping bombs. But it was it was done very well. All right, to wrap it up, next episode, episode 83, we are going to have a major NJL announcement. So y'all better come and check that out because it's something, um, something big. If you're following our social media, as you should be, you will hear about it before the episode drops, I believe. But uh, make sure you're here. We got a special guest who's coming to give us that news. So um, be here or we're going to be missing out. As always, subscribe on whatever you're using to listen, whether that be iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podcast, Podbean, whatever. Follow us on Twitter at Black Nerd Cast, Black Nerd C A S T as in podcast. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Negro Justice League. Go to Negro Justice League.com. That's where you get our podcast episodes as well as our merchandise shop where you can buy whatever shirts and things we have on. Follow us on Twitch at Black Nerd Cast. Uh, make sure you go to YouTube and uh, do use the search engine, find the Negro Justice League page on YouTube and make sure you're subscribed there. All of our gaming videos get loaded there as well as our podcast episodes. And, and we do have some surprise videos there every now and then. And next episode, in addition to our um, major announcement, we are going to be reviewing Umbrella Academy, which I have finished and love and uh, Kingdom on Netflix. So join us next week. I am Cherry and that is all for tonight.